this is Kay from Studio 33 Art by Kay. Welcome back. So today I'd like to do a 200mm by 200mm ceramic tile, um, which is 8 inches by 8 inches, I believe. Um, and I'm going to do a small Dutch pour, just a very small Dutch pour, um, just blowing it out with a small hairdryer. And then I'm going to put some little blooms onto it. So I was going to do this on my really big um, 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter tile, but I thought oh, I'll try it on the little one before I do it on the big one. So all I've done today is I've cleaned off my tile with the um, isopropyl alcohol. I'm now just going to layer a base of the Araldo white paint, which has been just mixed with flow troll and I've added a tiny bit of water um, just to thin it out a little bit. The consistency I'm using for this because it's a Dutch pour um, is just slightly thinner than I'd normally use for any other techniques. And all I've done is mixed it to the usual consistency where it formed a um, little mound just as it was drizzling, the paint was drizzling off the stick back into the cup and then I just literally added a couple of little squirts of water. I've just got a um, little atomizer there or pistol grip sprayer whatever you want to call it um, and I literally just squirted a couple of squirts of water and that was just enough to thin it out where it um, didn't form much of a mound running back into the cup. So I'm just going to make sure that I've covered all my edges here hopefully and always make sure that where you're going to leave your piece of art to dry um, is level because I will be taking it off the turntable here and taking it elsewhere to dry so I've already checked that that area is level otherwise when you leave your item to dry if it's not level when you come back most of your art work will be on the table or floor or wherever it is that you've um, put it to dry. It's just gravity for you. Okay, so that looks about right. I think I've laid down about the right amount of paint there. So I'm just going to be using um, a mixture of metallics and non-metallics today. And I'm going to be laying them down metallic, non-metallic, metallic, non-metallic non and so on. Um, I've been told that helps to create more cells. Um, I know it does create some cells, so we'll um, give it another go. So the Araldo uh, Metallic Waves is the first colour I'm going to lay down. I don't want to put too much paint because it's only a small tile. That's part of the problem is sometimes you sort of forget that you're doing a small one. This is the Global Dark Sea. Just a little bit of that one in there followed by the Global Metallic Cyan, which is an absolutely gorgeous colour when it dries. And I'm not going to do any little wispy bits off this one um, because I need room to do some blooms. This is the um, Global Ultraviolet. Now I haven't thinned out my um, paints here like I normally would for a Dutch pour. I've just left them at the normal consistency. This is the Araldo um, Metallic Fuchsia. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the um, Araldo Metallic Copper, which I love. This adds a sort of a lovely metallic look. And then my Montmartre Proin Paint Gold. All of those paints have just been mixed with Australian Flow Troll and nothing else. Right, so I'm going to blow this out with a hairdryer that I haven't used too many times. It's just one of these long, thin ones. And I've covered over half of the aperture. I noticed Julie Cube did that um, to help concentrate the flow to make it flow a bit better. So I'm just going to try and blow this out. First of all, I'll press my bubbles. I nearly forgot. Won't be a moment. Okay, so here we go. Oh, there's never enough cords. Whoops, nearly tipped the whole thing over. That'd be 
a moment. Just chat amongst yourselves for a sec. And I'll be right back. Whoops. <laughs> oh, there's always cords everywhere. I don't know. Right. So this one um, has the two different speeds and also can be on cold. So I'm going to leave it on cold. And here we go. Wish me luck. Well, that was interesting. I've got a lot of base paint on there, obviously too much. Um, and when I've blown it out, the way I've hit the paint with the hairdryer is that I've blown the white over, which is a technique in itself, but um, wasn't quite what I was wanting to do. I was wanting more to just blow the paint out. Um, so, that's why we're going to get all these little white cells here now from all the white paint over the top. However, because I'm going to be putting some blooms on to there as well, maybe that's going to work in my favour. So when you're using your blow dryer and you're doing the Dutch pour, um, if you hold it up high and then you just wait till it hits the edge of the paint and then blow out, if you hit behind it here, you're going to blow the white all over your um, paint takes a bit of practice and I haven't done many Dutch pours in recent times so um, we're all learning here together. It's a nice cell sun to come up here though. So now I'm just going to lay down some more paints um, and put some little blooms just around and um, fill up with this bit of negative space here and just do them different colours. I'll lay three colours onto each and then a bit of metallic, either the gold or the bronze. And then a little bit of the cell activator. So this is just the global black paint mixed with Australian flow troll to a consistency. And I know it's impossible for you to see. Yeah, when I let it drizzle off the, off the little spoon, it bounces back within three seconds. Okay, so I'll try not to put too much on here. And just drizzle it around a little bit. And then I'll put another one over in this area up here. So we'll use some different colours. It's purple. So it's fun just to experiment with different things. Because you never know what you're going to get. And of course, you guys have got the benefit of watching me either make something fantastic or make a mess. It doesn't matter. It's all good fun. Just add a bit of the cell activator on there. Try not to put a big blob right in the middle of it, but spread it around a little bit. And I think I'll do another one just up here. What color will I do that one? Put the pink. And the beautiful Cyan and a bit of the blue. Mm, will I go copper or gold? Go a bit of copper and a bit of gold. Okay, now my cell activator. I'm going to have a go at blowing this out with the um, world's smallest blower, which I've had a bit of trouble with lately. It kept on cutting out on me. I think it might have a little loose um, wire, but I'll give it a go. And if not, I'll just blow it out by mouth. Okay, and again, I'm going to hold it up far enough that I can see where I'm hitting it on the canvas or in this case on the tile um, and that will help me to get direction hopefully. So I'm just coming down, I'm just waiting to see where it hits the paint. Okay there it goes and then out we go. Same with that direction. 
Mr. Ito. So I'll just try and blow these out um, by mouth. Excuse the back of my head. And that's much better. Okay. These blooms are looking lovely. The uh, colours are really gorgeous. And um, cells, just magical cells. So I'm just going to blow slowly into the middle of this one where um, clearly I've put too much black and see if I can bring up any cells. So I'm just using a big jumbo straw. It's a paper straw and that enables you to flatten out the end like that. few more little cells are coming up there now and then now I'll just um, draw in the shapes of the petals I'm just going to use a um, this is a thicker metal I'm oh, sorry a thicker uh, bamboo skewer and I'm just going to use the um, flat end of it just to draw some shape into these These colours are looking gorgeous. That um, the dark sea mixed with the metallic cyan, oh, just lovely. So I'm going to try not to disturb the cells in the middle too much, because I want to keep them because they're so lovely in there. And this here, where that bronze is coming through, it's lovely. Okay, so I'll just keep drawing these through. Give the shape of my flowers and I've certainly got a lot of cells going on which is nice now this guy he got a little bit all over the show where I tried to blow it out with the mini blower and I really think blowing out by mouth you just get more control unless you're doing a very small bloom Okay, now I'm just going to do a little bit of a wrecking in through here where the Dutch pour is underneath, um, just for a bit of interesting shape. I'll just do a bit of a wrecking line through here as well. So a wrecking line, you're just slowly swirling the skewer through the paint. And it creates these beautiful lines where where the skewer cuts through the paint there. I'll do another one over here. Just slowly taking it through however you want to do it. And it looks nice. And it kind of just connects your flowers together as well. And then I think I'll... What will I do now? Um, quite like that through there, the way it is. Don't want to do too much more. I don't want to spin this out too much either, although I think I have got a fair bit of paint on there from where I um, laid a fair bit of paint, seeing as I was doing the Dutch pour underneath to allow the Dutch pour to flow. Um, you don't need that much paint when you're doing the blooms. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a swizzly bit through here as well, a little small wreck through there. And over here as well, just where that Dutch pour colour is sitting there, just to blend it all in a bit. So I'm really loving those wrecking lines. I might do a little bit more of that, I think. Just makes it something a bit different.
So I guess this is a Dutch Poor Bloom Wreck. Don't want to disturb the cells too much though. Because I do love my cells. Let's do a little bit through here. Maybe a little bit there. Okay, well, it's looking really nice. And a little bit more there where it went a bit awry. So I'm loving these centers, this beautiful the gold. I love that Montmartre pouring paint gold. It just creates the most beautiful cells. And we've got a little bit here that needs a bit of wrecking. So you can just sort of doodle along, fix anything up, make it look a bit different. Um, whatever takes your fancy. You don't want to make it look too busy, which is always the chance, of course, when you continue to fiddle. I think I might leave that now. I think that's looking really nice. And I'm going to leave this piece of negative space just there. I think that that um, works. I'm not sure I like this little guy. Just swizzle him around a bit instead. Maybe grab a little bit of paint and put into that. You can just get a bit of paint on the end of your um, skewer there if you want to add a bit of paint. And then you can just... Bring it in and around. There you go. And if you've got a little bit that you don't like, just gently touch it with your finger and it disappears. Okay, is there anything else you're thinking I should do there? I think that's enough actually. So I really love that. Now, just make sure that you've covered all your edges. Everything's covered. And when I go and put it in its resting place, I will make sure that there's no paint running off the edges. Um, if there is, I will make sure I get a um, wooden stick or anything else, even your finger, and make sure you wipe all those strips off so that it doesn't continue to draw your paint off um, as it's drying. Okay, so that's looking good. So I'll take you down in a second for a um, close-up. So here we are back for our close-up. Now I haven't spun this off. So there's quite a bit of paint on there, but I'm hopeful that if I let it dry slowly, um, and it should dry slowly in these current weather conditions here in Australia, um, it's currently about 16 degrees during the day where I live on the south coast of New South Wales. So, if it dries slowly, it shouldn't crack. So here we are. Oops. Some beautiful cells there. Just lovely. And over here with this guy over here. I'm just loving those cells in the middle there with the gold. So there we go, hope you like that. So that was my Dutch Poor Bloom Wreck. Um, but the Dutch Poor pretty much disappeared. So I'm gonna do another one and I will do smaller blooms with the Dutch Poor. Okay guys, we'll speak soon. And if you have subscribed to my channel, I greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, if you would, that would be absolutely wonderful. All right, stay safe, everybody, and keep painting. Bye-bye. So here I am three days later, and this piece has dried beautifully without any sign of cracking whatsoever. And uh, so I'm very pleased with that. So even though I didn't spin it out, because I'm not using anything like house paints or using thick consistencies, 
the results are still beautiful and um, not a crack in sight. Okay, so that's that uh, dried result for you.